right, if we're ready, here we go. Ali, everyone. Hey, everybody. How you guys doing? All right, so tonight we're going to talk about a little utility that just came out a couple weeks ago called Python-LS. Nobody really cares about this. So we have the dir keyword, and this is part of the Python built-in standard library. And so you can use dir to get information about uh, the objects you want to introspect or your like local namespace. If we use dir without any parameters, it's going to load information about our namespace. If we use parameters, it's going to load attribute information about our objects. So you see here, I have a data class, 3.7 of course. Name, age, and say hello are the three attributes. I'm going to be going back to my REPL that's on the left side. So from my file, I'm importing this class in. I'm creating a person, and the person's name is Anakin, age 10. And then I'm going to do a dir on my p object. So you can see here, we have all these attributes, and they're part of our object. So we can introspect them. And so the three that we created, which are age, name, and say hello, they're the ones that are highlighted on the bottom right there. So if now we do a dir without any parameters, we're going to have person, and we're going to have p, which is the thing that we imported as well as the object we created. Pretty standard stuff. If we use the dunder or double underscore dir method, we can specify a name of attributes we want to return. So here, I'm creating another data class called a person again. And this time, I have a attribute or I have a method, double underscore dir double underscore or dunder dir. And they're going to be returning three attributes. Well, we're, going to do, we're going to do questions at the end. Uh, so here on my right side, I have the REPL. I'm doing exactly the same thing. But this time, when I call dir, you don't see any of the methods except for the things I specified in my Dunder, uh, my Dunder method itself. And there they are. So this is great, but it becomes a problem with things like data frames. I put this at size 10 font. This is size 6 font. This is, slow, like, this is the lowest it can go. And it still doesn't get to the bottom of what you really needed to do. And this is a problem. And this is where Python LS is going to come in. Python LS is a better DIR. It's DIR with search built in. So here we have the ls method. We're going to pass in an object called p. I'm going to have the attribute I'm searching for, code. And I'm going to go three levels deep in my object. So that's my, my depth I'm setting right there. So you can see here we have code. We have decode, which contains the word code, and just uh, other things that are along the same, uh, the same lines for those attributes that we found. So just going into this a little bit deeper. So you can pass in the object. You can search for attributes. You can decide how far you want to go for your max depth. Uh, if you want to see the dunder methods or the single underscore methods, there are also flags you can pass in to do that. So if you want to install Python LS, you can just do a pip install Python dash LS. It's actually going to be put into your uh, virtual environment as a built-in. So what this means is that when you install it, it's going to be available like already in your REPL. Or if you're doing some PDB, that's where you can use it. So this is where I use it more than anything. So when I have something, when some debugging to do, I want to introspect my object. I'll do an LS on the object to sort of figure out what I need to do. So why am I talking about all these things? Like last month, I talked about unit test mock. This month, I'm talking about this little utility called Python-LS. So developer tools. There are things that we use to create our programs. So we use it to create, debug, and support the programs we make. They make our lives a little easier. So if we master our tools, we'll make our lives a little easier. So this is a quote I saw that was just really good. In order to solve your problem, you need to have the right tools to do it properly. At the end of the day, I look at software as the crafts, and then we're craftsmen. We want to solve problems. Obviously, we want to solve problems quickly, but we want to do it in a way that we can actually solve them that's scalable, and that we can go on and actually want to work with our code. If our code has tests, we'll want to go in and make those changes. So always try to make your software like that. Try to improve your code wherever you can. Uh, so the biggest thing that we use as developers is our IDE. Are you fumbling around your IDE, or do you know your, all your shortcuts? If you don't know your shortcuts, print out a list of all your shortcuts. Force yourself to use them. Learn your shortcuts. You should be able to code as fast as you think. I really want to give this talk to just get the conversation going about developer tooling. I don't think we talk about this enough. If you have a tool you use, you have a trick you want to share with, 
let me know. I would love to like, hear about it. If you want to give a talk, Chippy always needs people. So that's it for me. Thanks, everybody. So yeah, I'll take questions. So PDB uh, is the Python debugger. It's a built-in debugger that allows us to uh, go into our code and actually check it out in a dynamic manner, because our objects always change. So it allows us to introspect our code as they are, uh, introspect our objects as they're created. There's another tool I use called PDB++. I might give a lightning talk about it later, but it's a better version of PDB. It has tab complete. It also has an RC file, so you can have your uh, PDB settings across various different machines. But that's another talk altogether. Next, next month. Yeah, that's, uh, that's next month, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? All right, thanks a lot. We'll see you next month. <laughs>